We have a group from ACM Solar presenting, and we've also got Angus and Joss in the back to answer any questions if you guys need to have any, um, you know, want to have a little chat afterwards. Um, ACM group are new to the centre, and we're absolutely thrilled to, to have a professional company within the centre doing solar. There's so many cowboys out there, we didn't find any of them. So we're very happy to have you. So thank you so much for presenting, and I'm just going to help you the first little bit. Yeah, that's right. For the <coughs> Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, it's really good to see so many faces, um, especially in an industry that is very confusing. Um, hopefully at the end of the day, you'll get an idea about what to look for, uh, what to avoid, um, because there is a lot more to avoid than, uh, than not. Um, a, bit about, uh, a bit about me, um, I've been in the industry for 12 years now, so it's quite a while. Been involved in everything from retail to wholesale, uh, residential, um, and commercial sales. Uh, we don't just focus on solar, though, we also do air conditioning and uh, electrical works. Um, I really don't want to make this presentation about me and SEM Group and you know where we operate in, which is Northern Territory, uh, South Australia, Queensland, <laughs> Victoria, and you know, everywhere apart from Tasmania and ACT and Western Australia. But it's really, I want to open the, the veil that is this industry. And who here is currently looking at solar or has got solar and was hugely confused? Yeah. <laughs> I know John was, where are you, John? You, you're a customer of ours. Um, good to see you again. No worries. Um, really good to see that you're happy with everything, monitoring your system and keeping your data records of what you're generating and stuff, which is a trick to see. Um, but there's such a variance in price. So really quickly, is solar worth it? I'm going to quickly touch base on what I'm going to talk through the, this presentation. If you've got any questions, put your hand up or just wait till the end. Um, pitfalls, why is pricing so varied? Is your see pricing from $2,800 to $10,000 and they got the same warranty and I'm just all confused, which is, I'll get to that. Uh, why does this industry have a bad name? And it does. Uh, it really, really does. I think it's probably up there with the, with the car salesman. Um, solar moving forward, what are the shifts in the industry? Um, how can you take advantage of the lower tariffs? Is battery worth it? All that sort of stuff. And then um, the new products and the technologies that, um, that we're involved with, um, the partners that have chosen to partner with us, um, like LG and that sort of stuff, your top tier you know, companies. Uh, load profiles, why are they important? How to understand your current load consumption, whether it's solar is going to save you 20% or is solar going to save you 80%. But I'm going to go through that as well. And then, and then basically finish off with our batteries worth it. Um, this industry is not about trust. This industry is not about spending three grand, four grand, five grand, 10 grand and then you think you're done because that's not the case you will need support down the, down the track and therefore you need to have a level of trust and then questions at the end or you can just put your hand up throughout the presentation okay. any questions so far guys finding the solar minefield uh, <laughs> i can see <laughs> you're nodding and uh, yeah, been there done that um, and i don't blame you because everyone's got the UV warranty um, and the, I want to run through some numbers with you which will blow your mind as to who's around, who isn't around from when this industry started um, back in 2000 and well, it didn't start but that's when all the data was recorded in 2012. Alright, so that, that's my mug. 
Um, good thing about us, the final bit on us is that we're not um, a bunch of thousand I am, unreservedly. Um, there are six of us across the group, um, directors and four of them are um, electricians who have got clean energy council accreditation. So it's really important because anyone can start a solar company. Go online, call it whatever you want, and then buy some product on the black market and then contract to someone you found on the street um, and then away you go. You think you've got a great system, but you don't. Um, we've got about 50 odd members across the country. Solar, is it worth it? Um, the government really doesn't do this industry any favours with feed-in tariffs. And in one minute, it's amazing. Next minute, it's not. And then everyone goes, well, that was worth it and that's not worth it. Um, and not actually understanding how does solar benefit the average mum and dad and obviously business. The solar initially runs your house first and then the excess goes to the grid. With the new COVID world, people are staying home more than they ever used to, so the solar kind of ROI is getting better and better, but the reality is a lot of appliances these days are all smart. So when you go to work at seven in the morning, or six in the morning for me, just put your timer on for your dishwasher, start at nine in the morning, put your, put your call on at 10 and so on and so forth. So that's what we do as consultants and uh, Pete just joined us as well, PP, um, and Jack, hey Jack. Um, it's these guys' job to go and look at your current scenario. What do you need not only today, but what do you need in the future? And show you how to best manage your current profile as to whether solar is going to save you money this much or is it going to save you this much? But you can't do without having a site inspection, someone to check your meter box, make sure it's compliant. Because um, the last thing you want to do is, you know, spend your six grand or whatever it is, and then NHX come and turn up to your meter and they go, no, that's defect. And then you call up the solar company and it's just a mess. So having site inspections are critically important. Pitfalls of this industry. I'm probably going to say more than I should, but I'm going to, right? Because this industry is, and if you've done any research on solar, how Google works is they target you. And the next thing you know, you're on Facebook, and then you've got this ad for $3,000, and then you've got an ad for $2,800, and then you get a picture of a famous sportsman and trying to give some credibility to a very uncredible business, um, which whoever the PR guy that looks after their uh, profile is not doing them any favors. I'm going to show you, I'm not going to mention names because it's not fair, but I will show you an example of what you will see online. Do not do it. Okay. Um, prices are anywhere between $3,000 and $10,000 a say. But the confusing bit that everyone really doesn't, it's hard to understand from a mum and dad because I'm a value for money purchaser. That's what I said now. And everything I do is value for money for me, my family, yes or no. From there. But when you're basing that decision based on you know, you're going to spend a bulk of money up front and then you're going to recoup your money over time. If you're not going to recoup money at time, then it's just a worthless investment, whether it's two dollars or ten. So that's you know where this industry's got a bad name. Where I'm talking, I'm going to talk a bit about warranties and actually what does it mean? Can you throw the warranty in a bit? Because nine times out of ten, throw the warranty in a bit. And then worst case scenario, and I don't know the numbers, so the stats is all made up, but. I reckon in my 12 years, 100,000 solar panels have been removed off roofs and chucked in landfill. And that's not what we're about. That's not what this industry was designed to do. Save money, yes, but to achieve our uh, 2020 commitments to the Kyoto Treaty about our renewable energy targets and chucking solar panels in the bin is not great. In fact, it's not good at all. Getting a great feed tariff is not the be all and end all, or depending on your low profile. So what the consultants will do is they'll look at your current consumption. Are you home or you're not home? Do you have a pool? What stuff can you change to the, to the day? And then they will design you a, a system appropriate to your needs, not only today, but how long do you plan on staying in the property? Because the battery revolution is coming. It's, it's coming. 
So you've got to have enough solar to charge your batteries because there's no, nothing worse than having too small a system. Yes, you cover your daytime usage, but you've got nothing in the bank to charge your batteries. So something that the consultants will actually run with through with you and make sure you understand exactly what is the best solution for you because it's a, not a one solution fits all. Everyone goes 6.65, $3,000, picture of a sportsman, and you think it's credible, 25 year warranty, not gonna happen. I'll actually touch base on that too. While we're talking about warranties, I'm probably gonna jump a bit, that's what I do. Um, the two warranties with a panel, right? one's called a manufacturer's warranty, okay? and one's called a performance warranty. Everyone and their dog has got a 25 year performance warranty, which says something like in 25 years time, that, that panel's got to be 80% efficient. That's, and everyone then puts on their face, okay, 25 year warranty. And you go, well, is that a performance warranty or a manufacturer's warranty? So the manufacturer's warranty is the one that you want to look at. So, you know, some of this stuff out there has got a 25 year manufacturer's or a performance warranty, but the manufacturer's warranty is 10 years. So in 11 years, if that panel fails, unlucky. Mm -hmm. That's if they're still around. Some crazy stats for you, and this came from the guys at, at, at LG because they're putting um, putting together a submission to the, um, the Clean Energy Council and to some of the other regulatory bodies about that to put some structure around what's going on. And the numbers they told me last night blew my mind. So in 2012, the CEC had 480 um, registered panel manufacturers, 480. Today, of those 480, uh, uh, 43 are still around. Are you talking Australia? In Australia. <coughs> that basically means that, and this is this is and this is the kind of the, the murkiness of this industry is that so. 1.5 million solar panels have been installed in Australia. Half of those have got no warranty, nothing. Because what happens is, is that the sales guy or the sales company goes, let's buy that cheap stuff. It's got it on paper, pretty good warranty, 10 years, 12 years, whatever. They say it's got 25 dozen, because that's the performance warranty. And then that panel then starts to fail, right? Australian consumer law says, that the warranty goes down the chain. So it goes to the, uh, the importer first. If the importer's not around or if you bought direct, you know, a lot of those pile and I set them cheap companies, contract to the cheapest guys they can get their hands on. They will basically, the warranty goes to them, they go, too hard, not doing any more. And then they shut the door. You've got no warranty, zero, nothing. And <clears throat> So everyone said so the problem is that everyone duck this down the chain and then as soon as they and, and for sometimes it's not their fault. Like, you know, you 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 know you, as a as a as a reputable installer, you might go and buy a product you think is gonna be around. Um, but the reality is that in 10 years time, 12 years time, if there was 480 or 12 years ago and I was only 43, what's gonna happen? So we think as a general rule to a top tier product, uh, LG. The warranty on the LG is crazy. It's probably the only product out there that I could say to you, but hey, if we're not around, they are, because they're very diverse and that sort of stuff. So it costs a little bit more, but for the peace of mind and the trust that you know that you're not going to rip off the solar system and start again, it's worth it. Just bring that bit of money up front. That makes sense to everyone, kind of. Everyone, everyone heard of, oh, my friend's got a system, he got no warranty, and I can't find a guy who installed it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that you probably did, John, in, in, your, in your research, and you were the perfect customer because you really did understand quality. He's got LG, by the way. Um, and a big system. Um, yeah, really understood quality. You were then looking for a partner you could trust. And, you know, going back to the, Kind of the, the murkiness of this industry and you know who do you trust and whatever 
you know, you get this price online on Facebook, it's three grand, the other guys are eight. And you're like, righto, why is it that much cheaper? Let me do a bit of research. And then you go and find these guys with 500 Google reviews that are all from India, but, mm. uh, you know, no respect to anyone in the room, but that's what they do. And you think that you're getting a, a reputable company, but the reality is you're not. So anything that you see, uh, I'm just going to jump up to here. So anything that you see out there that's got buy now, 10 to go, run them off because it's not the case. Um, you know, let's talk a bit about the Clean Energy Council. Absolutely rubbish. Right? Rubbish. You can go and register at a company, pay you 50 bucks, go to the Clean Energy Council, pay 180 bucks, I think it is, and all of a sudden you are a Clean Energy Council member. Zero to do with quality. Zero to do with quality. Back to these reviews. Um, 15 years, 25 years, 35 years time. I don't even mention the brand. So goodness knows what it is and it will not be around. I'm not going to say this company is, but they have phoenixed, they closed down two years ago. Hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of Australians with no warranty, no nothing. They've started again, one of the brothers has taken over and all of a sudden they are now two different company names. And thank you very much for coming. I've got no liability anymore. It's just crazy. Really bad. You know, in the next two months, you're going to hear rebates are ending. They're not. They're reducing. So come January 1, if your system is not installed, you will lose about $350. But the sales companies out there go, right, now I can make an opportunity to create urgency. And they'll go and uh, say, hey, rebates are ending. Get in now. Don't fall for it. Not the case. But 350 bucks is 350 bucks. But it's not ending. Bill Chopper, most trusted, all that sort of stuff. Be wary. Back to the high and high, selling cheap, who do you trust, who do you not trust? Again, this industry is very murky, full of half truths and stuff like that. You get three guys to come and quote you, which you all should. Three quotes. We use our own installers. Right. Nine times out of ten, they don't. They've got their own subcontractors, but not their own installers. So do yourself a favour. Ask anyone who quotes you to give them a copy, give you a copy of their contractor's license. Give me a copy of your contractor's license with your proposal so I can do some due diligence around your business. Okay. There is an inherent, you know, you, you, you buy a cheap solar system, it then goes to a contractor who really gets paid peanuts. Again, I'm going to talk too much again, but, you know, we're a contractor, so we get approached by companies and we, and we do some work for some really reputable sales companies. Right? And they don't hide it, right? And we get paid around about $1,800 for a 6.65, including a plus GST. That's the average going rate for a subcontractor rate to go and install a solar system. The pile of my selling cheap guys, they're doing it for the bottom price. They want to give us $1,200. You just can't do it. The only way you do it is by getting some backpackers, do three jobs a day, throw it on your roof, some bloke in the office signs off on your government paperwork, and uh, you've got a solar system on your roof. And then when you have a problem, all that happens is because the contractor can pay peanuts, he's not around, he doesn't care anymore anyway, because he's not been paid to do it. And then you guys have no warranty. So really important, just do a bit of due diligence around who you're getting quotes from, bearing in mind you can't just, and it's funny, I did a bit of research today and I went online and I chose some very unreputable businesses that have got some really good reviews on Google. And I went to their Facebook page and you can't even comment on any of their stuff. Their review section has been disabled. Okay. Not good. Um, anyway, these things are 
get forced to look out for. So there is, on that cheaper end of town, a very big contract issue that the contract doesn't care anymore. You have a problem, you want support, your bill comes in. John calls you and goes, Brett, I want to check my solar generation, make sure it's within, you know, what you told me it is, and we jump online, we go through the numbers, that costs money. You won't get that level of custom service when it comes to the bottom end of town. It just doesn't happen. You just can't, can't get it. Product, price, install, custom service, happiness, you can't all have that when it's good and demand for anyone. So just don't do it. I've gone through phoenixing, what does it mean? Warranties, you guys all understand that it's a product warranty and a performance warranty. Really important to not get pulled by that 25 years because they probably won't be around. Um, but I was quite surprised at how many companies started when I started and now I'm not around. That just blew my mind. Um, which is not great. Some of the bad stuff you'll see out there is when we have those hailstones or hails that we all do in Southeast Queensland, you get a smashed panel. It'll be covered under your warranty. So don't, you know, you don't have to go and get a specific warranty from your insurer because it's all covered under your household warranty. But you do want the better product so that when there is a hailstone or hailstorm, you don't get your product smashed. Reputable installers, how do you find them? So yeah. saying the better products can handle hailstorms? Well, they got, for example, the LG Neon 2 has got a 42 mil um, thickness, or can handle, sorry, the hailstones that are up to uh, 42 mil. Some of the cheaper ones are about 25 mil. But if you get a massive storm, there's nothing going to stop you. But I think in my 12 years, I think there was a, there was a tornado in Bagara, which is near uh, Bundaberg. And I think that was the only panel we've ever lost. I don't think we've lost any in the last five years due to hail. But good question. So how do you do your due diligence? Look for reputable, reputable um, retailers. There's a really good platform called Solar Quotes. Any you guys, you guys have done any research around solar? Finn Peacock Legend really talks about not about not going down the cheap and nasty route because it will come and bite you at some point. Whether it's whether you're lucky and you might get a good installer, you might be unlucky and get a bad installer. Um, but check the reviews on solar quotes. If they're not on solar quotes, as far as Finn Peacock's concerned, he's, they are not regular. Get a good install warranty from a company that will actually be around in 10 years. And how, who knows that we're going to be around in 10 years. But we are a very diverse business. We don't just do solar, we do uh, electrical, we do air conditioning. So in a very rocky industry, which the solar is, we're a diverse business and we've also focused on those top end products so that we won't have problems. And if we did have a problem, LG with their dealer network, which is one of the dealers in the Southeast Queensland area, they take over your warranty parts and they do the whole thing and they will find um, a dealer to come and look after you for free. So pretty good. We've been lucky enough to be approached by, for example, coming into the Building Design Centre. Um, so, Charles and Tom um, spoke to LG. So, they did a research and they, you know, in this facility there's manufacturers, it's only manufacturers, Caesar Stone, whatever, whatever. They then said, well, who is the best product in the marketplace? And the research that Tom did was LG. LG then um, said, look, that's not our gig. We don't do that, but our um, most reputable dealer in Brisbane is SEM Group. So they contacted us and we came and we jumped at the opportunity to um, be involved. But it's really important that you know, the bigger players want to partner, they got a brand to lose. So they don't want to partner with anyone. So we've been lucky enough to partner with not only with LG, but Tesla. So we're a Tesla accredited installer. So not only um, here, but in Darwin and um, South Australia. We're also a solar edge trusted installer. So that's a different technology. So this is something that 
and you guys are looking at um, solar for your home, or if you indeed it got solar and it's not working, or whatever the case may be. Um, once you have a science session with guys, they will run through some different technology with you. That is phenomenal. And we're going to talk a bit about where solar is going next. Solar's next is going electric vehicle. You will get an EV vehicle at some point in the next five to ten years. It's coming. So do you have the technology and enough solar to charge a car? Really important. Um, the solar -based stuff has some pretty cool other technology which the guys will explain to you. Um, you know, if and when you guys do get a site inspection. Uh, we're a friend's partner as well, which is probably the, uh, along with SMA, which is the German inverter, it's probably the premium string inverters in the marketplace, but they've approached us to be partners. They've got a brand to lose. They don't want to partner with anyone. M phase and obviously Mitsubishi Heavy Industries uh, air conditioning. I'm going to quickly probably jump a bit and talk a bit about um, what's called your um, approved solar retailer program. You guys have looked at the approved solar retailer program? No? Okay. The government put this UPU so you can become a clean energy council accredited partner with your 180 bucks or whatever it is. Hey, I'm the president. They then thought, well, that's not really good enough. So we're going to put what's called an approved solar retailer program together which means nothing again. <laughs> you think you're dealing with an approved solar retailer, they've got to be their bees and knees, but the reality is it's paperwork. It's do they have the right paperwork? Have they referenced the compliance procedure in the manuals? Um, are they charging GST right? You know, and that's another whole murky, you know, when the ATO finally wakes up to himself and looks at those cheaper products that cannot be charged in GST right. So ATO, are you listening? Mm -hmm. now. Um, but they will never be an approved solar retailer because well, they don't do the GST right and they don't have the customer's interests first and foremost. From a paperwork point of view and who do they go to the to complain? So that's the approved solar retailer. So again, you pay your money, that's a lot of money uh, based on how many how many installs you do a year. I think we spent five thousand dollars on yours for the year, and you're now an approved solar retailer. Everyone thinks that you're now the bee's knees, but you're not. <laughs> but it's nothing to do with quality. It's a good paperwork. So when you're dealing with an approved solar retailer, that's not the be all and end all. Do some due diligence because there's look, it's probably a very big step forward compared to just being a approved or a clean energy council member because that's just your 180 bucks and that's it. Um, but it does have some more ticks and balances, but it's nothing to do with quality. So do some research on the quality of the company, talk to some of their customers, but steer away from that bottom end because it will, even though it looks phenomenal, and I think the latest ad is you've got a two year payback. When you put your rational hat on, it just doesn't make sense. Monitoring, back to the solar, is it worth it in this new world of lower feed-in tariffs? Yes, prices have dropped. So the good thing is that, you know, when I first started, I think a six kilowatt system was something like $26,000. You know, it's somewhere now between six and 10. So it's much cheaper, right? But, Solar in the new world is about knowing how to use your power. So, you know, is the, is a 6.6 .6 correct for you or is a 10 correct for you? You just don't know. Once you get your 10 on the system, the guys do, they do their jobs and they explain to you how much power you use using, when you use it, they design a system on what they believe is going to be the right thing for you, but how you use your power. And no, not everyone's at home during the day, so you can't be, you know, 100% amazing with it, but don't know how you use your power, you have no idea how to most effectively save money. So every inverter out there has an app, some are good, some are bad, where you can monitor your solar generation, is it right, how much am I generating this time, this year compared to last year, 
there'll be a, a 0.3% drop, which is normal, but is there a 50% drop? There's a problem. But the smarter stuff now, solar today is about smarter. You know, your, your solar based technology, you can monitor every panel on your phone. It's pretty cool. Right. Onto a tiny phone. But if you don't know how you're using your power day in, day out, you have no idea how to save the most money. So I know on, on John's system, and sorry, I keep referencing John because I know your system very well because you were a legend and I like working with you. Um, John knows exactly how much power he is generating. He knows exactly how much power he's using of his solar generation day and night. So it's how you can, and you know, my wife hates me for it, but you know, I go home on the weekend and I'm there, I go, right, I'm going to put the pool on, right, with my monitoring and go, okay, well, I'm, and I've got a 10 kilowatt system on my roof, or 12 actually. And I'm generating 8,000 watts. I go, right, I'll put the pool on, there's 1,000 gone, I've got 7,000 left, dishwasher on, I've got 3,000 left, washing machine on, right, that's all free. But if you don't know how much power you're using, you've got no idea. So, how much is the 12 kilowatt generating today? Uh, it'll be around about 49 kilowatt hours a day on average. So it's system size times 4.2. And then if it's if it's east-west, then you might lose 10 percent But that's kind of the thing. But I know if you don't have that monitoring, for example, I had a customer in, in Darwin called me and said, my aircons are not working. And I said, why is that? So I'm looking at monitoring at nine o'clock at night and it's using way more than it than it should. So we got on the phone to Mr. Vichy, we did a service call, we found that it wasn't, it was reaching temperature, but it didn't realize that it reached Right, so kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. But if you didn't have that monitoring, you'd have no idea. You know, people with kids here and they love their aircons and they leave them on when they go out and stuff like that, you can very easily see how much power you're using. It's really good. If you don't, and, and that monitoring is $250 on single phase and $500 on, on three phase. So it's well worth it. Well, well, well worth it. Hey, sorry, Brett, what do you say? It's 250 on single phase. What's that mean? Uh, so if you've got a single phase property, yep. which probably 80% of you guys do, um, the monitoring device is 250 bucks. Instead of a one-off. One-off cost. Yeah. If you guys already have solar here, there's another solution called um, solar analytics. So if you guys have got a solar system and you might not have the inverters that have those smart meters as you know, part of the package. We can retrofit any system with a different bit more money, but it's called solar analytics and it's fantastic. About three, please, please. About five hundred bucks. Yep. I've actually found it really effective. So I've got more trim on as well. You know, it tell me if the sun goes in for like 10, 15 minutes, you see the consumption, your actual production go down, then when the sun comes back a bit, kitchen. Yeah, and you're special, John. You are a special. We <laughs> love it. <laughs> oh, look, I, I much prefer, and I say this to any customer I go see, I much prefer someone who does take an interest in what they're doing by, oh, it's cheap, I'll it. That's not what it's about. You know, John was fantastic because he knew what he wanted, and I just had to, you know, show him and have trust in what we did because I knew he was going to be a very particular customer who knew what he wanted. I think I told you, I'd much prefer, you know, I think you emailed me before you made a decision, I don't know, 300 times or something. But I said, I'd rather you were onto it rather than just taking my word for it. Yeah. Much prefer someone who's got a truckload of questions rather than telling the blind faith, oh, that's the one for me and just walk away. So, so they won't be on the solar quartz website, I found that to be really complete gold mounting. Yeah. Yeah, it does, it does get a bit of a lot of the <coughs> confusion out there, because there is a lot. Um, and then batteries, I mean, this is a million dollar question. This is the million dollar question. Are batteries worth it? And the answer is, it's a case by case basis. Okay? It's how do you use your power during the day? What is your short term, medium term, long term goal? Because you know, when you have your consultant come and talk to you, he will design a system based on not only your needs today, but what is your 
you know, short-term, medium-term, long-term goal in this particular property. And, you know, with COVID and all that sort of stuff, I mean, I'm assuming everyone's short-term goal plans have now become medium-term goal plans and so, you know, so on and so forth. So based on, you know, what you think that you're going to be doing in this house in the next two, three years, will then determine which product they want to or think will be best for you. If you're going to be here for four years, probably won't go LG. Probably go another one of the top tier one products. That's got a good warranty. They're going to more than likely be around, but you're going to get your money back quicker. If you've got a longer term goal plan, then they'll talk to you about LG because it's better peace of mind. Better peace of mind. The reality is it's probably only $2,000, $1,800 difference between a good product and LG. So it's not triple like it used to be. When I first started, that $26,000 system with an average panel with LG was probably double the price. But the reality is it's not. So our battery's worth it for you. It really does depend. What's your load profile? And what we say to a lot of customers is, look, batteries are coming and doing this. You know, going back to the, you know, the, you know, the solar curve in terms of pricing, it was crazy high, and then over time it goes like this. Batteries are going to do the same thing. What's crazy high has now done this, and then it's going to do this over time. But if you don't know how you are using your power, so that smart monitor not only does it show you how to use your solar more effectively, it shows you, well, what is my demand at night time? And then once we know how much you need at night time, we can then design a battery that's not too big and not too small. But if you don't know your profile, we've got no idea. Does that make sense? On the, on the battery side of things. So, um, you know, the Tesla is great. It can be retrofitted to any product. So anyone's got a solar system here, that can just be plonked next to an SMA. It can be plonked next to a Sunray. It can be plonked next to a, a ADB. Throw it, whatever you want. It's got a charge controller built in. It's AC coupled and just plonk it in and away you go. Kevin Rudd had one installed yesterday. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. Not by us, by the way. So if you're installing a new solar system that you, you don't need uh, battery at the moment, would you set it up so <laughs> just retrofit the battery straight in? Not whether it's wiring and all that sort of stuff. We do that and then just... Correct. So depending on, this is where knowing what you're doing and having a consultant come and torch for what's going to be right for your needs. Because yes, you can put an SMA in, 6.6 .6 kilowatts with a solar or a Fronius and go, right, do that. And then we can come back later on, two years down the track. I'm sure the Queensland government's going to do a battery rebate, Queensland government battery rebate. Uh, Northern Territory has one right at the moment. So $6,000 plus GST, you're getting a battery on. It's going ballistic. And uh, Adelaide's or South Australia's used to be about 6000 now it's 4000 right. So Queensland government, battery. Um, but you can plonk on that Tesla to any inverter, and it's all ready. Battery ready. So is that a rebate, $6,000 rebate? What's the, what's the cost of the Tesla? Okay, so we get determined by Tesla what it's going to cost. So if you go to Tesla and go website pricing, it's between $13,500 to $14,500 for the battery. And you get $6,600 off that. Makes it really attractive. But putting batteries on is not necessarily about return on investment, it's about grid independence. It's about you know, what happens if they take away the feeding tariff? Which is not really why you should get a solar system for that feeding tariff, but some people do. Um, so getting a system is not about the feeding tariff, but if they do remove the feeding tariff and you've got capacity to charge your battery, I mean, I've worked on some numbers. You know, if you put a Tesla on with an LG, um, your payback's about seven years. So it's pretty good. But you, you know, you know, from you know, you get the latest toy, it's really shiny, we just installed it upstairs. So before you guys go, if you want to have a walk around upstairs and see our thing, um, there's a really shiny Tesla uh, battery um, shell, because they're 125 kilos, so <laughs> fancy lugging that upstairs. Um, but it's fantastic having that toy. The monitoring is phenomenal. Um, one of the things that also is going to be coming more prevalent over time, and that's why this monitoring is fantastic, whether it's in the Tesla or solar analytics or the 
N phase is it monitors the grid voltage. So grid voltage should be 236 volts, right? Now, 236, 240, it does this all day, every day. And it does this outside of the parameters. And what happens is, is that you might have a TV, I'm not saying this is the case, but people go, it's broken, I'll just replace it. But grid spikes happen all the time. Dishwashers, washing machines, fridges, cookers, all that sort of stuff do not like grid spikes. And if you it's broken, I'll just go and get a new one from Harmon Norman. But the reality is, 20% is probably to do with voltage. But you can't prove that. You can't get the energy access and say, hey, get a grid spike. They go, hang on, there's my monitoring. Grid went up to 260 volts, thanks very much. And they'll come and give you a, uh, a warranty. It's really good. Oh, hey, what's the physical size of the battery? Oh, oh crumbs. It's kind of yay. Yeah. Body yay. Yeah. And yay. <laughs> but it's upstairs, so yeah, just go and have a little, a little look. But look, I, I just think from a, from a having having grid independence, you know, having having backup and a power failure. I don't think we don't. Have, I know we don't have many power failures, but. It, happens infrequently. It's pretty cool if you have power no one does. How much ventilation does it need around it? Um, from a regulation point of view, I mean the Tesla for example has got built-in cooling. That's got cooling water going through. Um, I think that with the regs, the same with installing, you can't install an inverter right next to the meter box. It's about 300 mil. Okay. So, so you can still put it in a cupboard? Uh, cupboard? We'd be fine. Uh, what we tend to do is, if it's going to go in the garage, we put the bollards in front, so they don't hit it. Um, but if it's going to go in the, in the, in the cupboard, I can't see that being an issue. Sorry, but did you say it has to be 300 away from the meter box? Well, you can't have an inverter because the inverter's got breathing holes, right? Right. So basically 30, 30 centimeters. Oh, that's not right. Yeah. So you mentioned like um, sort of batteries, kind of, I mean, about 30 years. Yeah. Uh, how do we better utilize it? So you charge it obviously, but in the night time, you run the aircon and then run off that and then the morning you charge it again so that it will Yeah, so it's important to know your load profile to work out what size do I need, but the solar will run your house. Okay, so fridge, freezers, dishwasher, pools, yada, yada, yada. Excess will go into the batteries. If you don't have a battery, excess goes to the grid and they pay you between six and 15 cents a kilowatt hour. And then you draw it back at night time from the, from the, from the sky at 26 cents a kilowatt hour, right? If you have a battery, instead of putting it to the grid and getting paid your six cents to 14, 15 cents, it'll store in the battery and then you use it at night, saving you 26 cents a kilowatt hour. But yeah, showing your friends that you got a battery, I reckon is pretty cool. <laughs> So, no, no. I'm not understand how it works. So, if you're charging a battery during the day, um, with an overcast day, so perhaps you don't have the full power mm -hmm. and it's still hot, so for example, you're having a high humidity, um, when you run out of power in the battery, yep. you then just automatically feed off the grid. So, Correct. there's no manual having to change. No, manual, manual having to change. Yep. People just do it. I mean, for all the negatives of the grid, it's a cheap battery generator. So just use the battery as a generator um, for $100 a, a quarter or 80 bucks or whatever it is to have a cheap generator. It's don't go off grid. No one in here needs to go off grid for a standard residential block when the power's running past the street. If you're living in whoop whoop and, and there's no power and it's going to cost you $50,000, $70,000 for Energex or everyone to come and do their thing, go off grid. For all of us living in town, I'm assuming, then yeah, just don't go off grid, but use, be smart with the grid because it is cheap. Um, typical paybacks on solar, general solar, just so you know, and this is Tesla, uh, sorry, this is probably LG and say Solar Edge or LG and Fronius, 
somewhere between four and five years. It's, it's, and I'm not a financial advisor, so, but it's a good use of money. Putting solar in with a 20 to 25% return on investment, it's just a good use of money. And it's green. And it's green. And the sun's always gonna come out as opposed to putting money in shares and it's, you know, it's doing this and so I know my super has done this and you now it's kind of doing a bit of this, but it's, it's risky, there's, but there's no risk for the sun coming out. So you said just understands better. So even on an forecast day, yep. it does produce solar, yep. but not as much. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, on a day like today, I mean, the last three months in terms of solar irradiation have been the worst. So your solar system, John, would have been producing the worst it's done for the last three months. Um, but if the sun's out and you've got a 10 kilowatt system on your roof and it's middle of the day and it's peak, it's probably generating six to 8,000 watts. On a cloudy day, it's 300. Or 3,000, I should say. 3,000 watts. So you've mentioned LG primarily as far as solar panels are concerned. Yep. Um, what others do you um, recommend? Uh, we do a lot of solar edge panels. So solar edge, the Israeli company that does the optimizers, they put a panel. So it's an all in one solution, which is, ticks a lot of boxes for not dealing with different manufacturers. We do um, REC, which is a Norwegian company. Uh, we do uh, a fair bit of uh, product called Longi, which is probably one of the, one of the best <coughs> Chinese ones out there. So who's the name of Longi, L-O-N-G-I. Uh, we do a, a bit of, for those real budget conscious customers, a product called Seraphim. <coughs> um, but, you know, when I go and talk to customers and, and ultimately, you know, Seraphim's got a 15-year warranty. Um, uh, Longy's got, is it Pete? Is Longy 12 or 15? 12. 12. No, 12-year warranty, LG's 25. So is the difference in between these brands uh, to do with uh, longevity or is it or is it output or a combination of both? It's probably a combination of both. And, uh, you know, from a, you know, for the LG Mono um, Neon 2, I should say, Neon 2 is an N-type silicon. Um, the others, most of them out there, might turn on P-type silicon. The N-type silicon just generates more power than a P-type silicon, and therefore it's more special. Um, a lot of it's to do in the LG Neon 2s made in Korea, you know, so they've got, you know, wages here, and you go to China, and the wages are here, um, you know, just cheaper manufacturer there than it is here. But the quality is better here. So the other the other question is that in our case we're building a new house. Hmm? How do we assess our usage in that regard? Typically we just you know work out what the size system is. Yeah, so I had a customer yesterday building a um couple of properties and he just sent me his drawings. So one would you look at is it single phase or three phase? Mm -hmm. How big is the property in terms of square footage? Are you gonna have a pool? Uh, are you gonna have duct to the aircon? Is duct to the aircon is a nightmare? Mm -hmm. I know, they've got it. Um, use a truck loader power. Um, so yeah, we'll use best guess. Mm -hmm. guess. And we would, and we know over time, you know, a three hundred square meter house, you know, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. You know, what's that going to use in terms of power? Um, yeah. So, so you mentioned like the air conditioning is an item. Supposedly. They're a lot more efficient these days. Possibly. Than Possibly. Work. Yeah. Look, I think if you ran all split systems at once in the same rooms as a duct today, yeah, I think the duct would be good. Um, but in my case, my house, yes, it's a seven year old house. Um, it just seems to be cost of the earth. Yeah. And if I didn't have solar, it would cost me an extra $1,200 a quarter. So the question about batteries is uh, when I first started looking into it, um, I have to say that I was basically discouraged given that the payback time on, on batteries for about a, a 12 kilowatt system at that time was sort of probably around about 12 plus years mm -hmm. for a, a battery system. Now, uh, has that changed appreciably? In no, no. So 
if you look at a payback one, I'm going to put my 6.6 kilos on the roof, really good inverter, really good panels, cost me eight grand, my payback is four and a half years. That's one thing. Now you're putting a battery on, which is, if you combine the two, you've got a, like a seven and a half year payback. If you combine the total investment, if you purely look at the battery, which is, let's just say $14,000 for Tesla, right? so between the 13 and a half and 14 and a half, okay, $14,000. All you are doing now is stopping that power going to the grid and getting paid just six to 14 cents. And then you're drawing it back at night time, saving you 26 cents. So if you put an average, you know, in your workings, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not get paid by 12 cents. So I'm gonna now only benefit between 26 and 12. I'm gonna save 14 cents a kilowatt hour. Payback is 13, 14 years. Yeah. Absolutely correct. Um, but batteries is not necessarily about getting good payback and that sort of stuff. So if you combine the two, then you might be to eight years. But the key is to get yourself ready for the batteries. And battery will be coming down in price. Um, and you know, EV vehicles are coming, so you want to make sure that the inverter has that EV charging capability and that sort of stuff. So so what's involved in having charging capability over and above just an existing system where you've got Leave aside the battery at this juncture, yep. but with inverters and have a good solar panels okay. and all the rest of it. Right, so you can AC couple your batteries to any system in the planet. Put got your existing system, put your Tesla battery on, away you go, right? Job's done, AC coupled, fine. This is where the sales guys that come and talk to you will look at your now we had a guy last week, massive power bill, massive, right? Lots of money. Talk to him about the battery though, but he wants himself battery ready, right? Properly battery ready. So we basically said to him, look, you can put your five kilowatt, see a single phase, right? So sorry, put a six kilowatt um, hybrid ready inverter. So it's got the charge controller built in, as opposed to having it in the battery. That technology, that solar edge technology, lets you not only have 6.6 .6 kilowatts with the solar running your house, it lets you have a, a totally se separate system doing 6.6 .6 kilowatts for EV directly charging your battery when he puts his battery on. So he's not going to put the extra 6.6 .6 until he does batteries, but all he's going to do when he wants his batteries, LG Chem, BYD, put his battery in. He can put another 6.6, .6, his bills are so big, he can put another 6.6 .6 kilowatts for the solar directly charging his battery. Right. Can you just repeat the questions from the audience okay. before you answer them? Oh, right. Because someone was just saying they couldn't hear it. Okay. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, but it's, it's not a horses for courses, one solution fits all. Talk to one of the guys, it's a free assessment, see what's going to suit you guys, why need to have in the future. There are a lot of um, solar and windmills, you know, a lot of yachts and so forth around at the moment. Is it possible to uh, run that into a battery system as well? It is possible, but it's not um, predictable. So wind is not as predictable as sun. So in terms of payback and how much power is my wind turbine going to generate, you know, for example, when I said to you that a solar system is going to do the system size times 4.2 on average. So if you're 25 kilowatt hours, that's what that system will generate on average. And that's based on radiation there's nothing to do about it yeah. often climate change um, if you believe in it um, but in terms of wind it's not as predictable so the first we've got is on an east-west axis mm -hmm. and uh, what is the optimal angle of uh, attitude to the sun for uh, this possible uh, uh, power okay. it's a good question and it's and it's something that the consultants will talk to you because everyone Okay, so you've got to have there's two things to bear in mind. One is how much power is my solar going to generate? And what is going to give me the best return on my field? Two one percent. Because if you put a and obviously putting solar on north or true north is going to generate you more power. But the reality is you're going to generate all this power, the house is probably not going to use it all, and it's going to go to the grid and you're going to get paid six to fourteen. Whereas how you get the best use of your solar now is if you can match your everyday life 
with um, solar generation, you're going to save more money. So we would 100% say to a customer, hey, but half of me, get up in the morning, the sun comes up, six o'clock, the kettle on, all that sort of stuff, have half your panels on east and half your panels on west. So that when you come in from work or the sun's crazy in the afternoon, you can run your app on and it's going to come from your solar. If you have more north, yes, you're going to generate 10% more, but the reality is it's going to be good. And that's not how you get the best return of money. What about the actual angle? Oh, 23, 24 degrees, which is your average. Okay. Step up for EV, EV vehicle charging. Yep. What sort of scale are you talking about? Dollars or? Capacity more than dollars. Um, well, there's, there's two types of charging cable, type one, type two, depending on your um, uh, battery or your, or your your car. So the test is a type two charger. So the system we just done in Darwin was LG panels, solar edge, um, uh, standard inverter with a Tesla charger or Tesla inverter but battery because it's got the charge controller built in so you don't need that hybrid and then he's got his type 2 charger with about 700 bucks um, but it's uh, in terms of the charging <coughs> capability which is not really where you're going with it I'm not sure well, also wanted to find out about um, hot water systems. Mm -hmm. So do you recommend connecting it to um, solar is a better alternative to a heat pump? It's a good question. Um, I've got a heat pump too, which, um, which uses power for it. Um, depends on the cost. So I'm a, I think the standard electrical electric hot water unit is probably going to be cheaper than your uh, heat pump. Um, I would, what we would recommend is if you've got an electric pump or electric hot water service. So solar, just so you guys know, so you've got three meters on your property, potentially, right? Everyone's got what's called a peak meter. That is your tariff 11. So all day, every day, dishwasher, washing machine, pool, uh, maybe not pool, but fridge, freezer, everything in your house is one price all day, every day. So there's no off peak and peak in your house. Okay, to run dishwashers and washing machines and standard stuff. The only things that will be on an off-peak meter, which is either tariff 31 or 33, is your hot water or your pool. Okay, so whenever you build, you'll have two meters, meter one, meter two. Meter one is your everyday usage for everything in your house, and more than likely your second tariff is for your hot water. Solar does not benefit of the tariffs, okay, until we sort it out. So what we do is, and off-peak, if you look at your off-peak pricing over time, it's gone, it used to be really cheap, and now it's just gone up and up and up, and it's about 20 cents a kilowatt hour, right? So it's nearly 26, right? Anyway, so what we would do is we'd say to you, look, let's remove your off-peak meter, okay? You're getting charged for it, you don't know it, but you're getting charged for the off-peak meter, so we'd remove that, we'd put the, um, it's called a tail, we put the tail from the hot water circuit breaker into your main meter, and we put a timer in. So we say to your hot water, you know, element, please heat up between nine and four. And then, you know, depending on how big the cylinder is, you might need to, you can override it whenever you want. But for my house, um, we've got this, girls and stuff and all the rest of it. Um, and they love showering in the morning. So what I do on my little, on my little meter is it heats between nine and four, and then I have it on for half an hour at five in the morning. And my monitoring tells me that this was fine. So I can um, go in and uh, turn the heat the water, just the water at five in the morning. Yep, you can do whatever you want. It's fully pro. Monitoring system. Uh, monitoring will tell you what you're doing. It can't change anything. It just tells you. But the little um, clock that we put in into your meter box is like a little circuit breaker. So it's like that. It's got a little clock on there. And we just flip the little pips to the times that you want it on. And we tell you how to do it. 
and then you know and say look do you want to boost it at six, five in the morning four in the morning whatever you want and then you just do that and then away you go so uh, the payback on this system's got to be way better once you have an electric car right yeah yeah it's got to be oh, for sure it's going to be very quick if you're not spending five grand a year on fuel oh okay. Hundred percent. You take them. You're bumping your system size up all day. You got to let you go. I wouldn't think you need to put it on that much because one kilowatt's going to give you four point two kilowatt hours worth of, worth of generation, and it all depends on when you plug your car in too. Is it going to be during the day? Is it going to be at night? You know, if you're going to have batteries, it's. But typically, if you do charge it during the day, you know you're becoming kind of efficient use for your solar generation. Yeah, good question. Anyone else? Yep. So I have a fairly flat roof uh, building. So yep. with a drink, do I need to go for a filter or something? Or? That's a really good question as well because it's all about payback, right? Well, it's not, it's not all about payback. It's about being efficient use with your money. So going flat is a no-no because you can't um, have water drainage to self-clean, right? Um, from a solar generation point of view, going flat versus 23, 24 degrees, it really isn't at all in terms of solar generation. The issue is with the cleaning. So yeah, if it was, it was flat and there was no trees around, we would give you the option. But if you wanted to tilt them, it was 40 bucks to tilt them. And you need one per day. Do they do self-clean? Because we, I, we live in a city and we have a lot of rain. Yeah, it, it's, from, it'll be quite surprising how much it doesn't impact on your solar generation. Okay. But if you have that monitoring, it will tell you. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, windows on your, on your house over time, you know, they, they like that. They do get that sort of yeah. grime on them. So, uh, but depending on who installed your system and that sort of stuff, it's probably worth getting a a health check um, and make sure it's working properly um, because a lot of them aren't. Um, and then, yeah, getting out panel clean when you're there. Okay. Yeah, we're just in a unit, so that means getting special equipment to get oh, really? clean. Oh, yeah. cool. There's something starting with L that kind of builds up on it. Um, uh, is it leaching or leaching? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. So, so, does it not self clean enough to not have those deposits? Um, in terms of the solar generation portion of your portfolio, I mean, I've, I mean, I've put my hand up. I've had my solar system on this house I'm at now for seven, six years. I've cleaned it at zero. Mm -hmm. zero. Do you know the difference between what you sell at and what you buy at? Is there a difference between what you sell and what you buy at? Yeah, so if you buy from the grid, depending on your retailer, it's about 26 cents a kilowatt hour. If you send it to the grid, it's about 8 to 14 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's definitely better to use it rather than give it to them. To the 26 to buy. Yep. And eight, did you say? Between eight and 14, depending on your retail. So it's definitely worth, you know, and if you're a retiree, then obviously you can manage your consumption very easily. But if you do work, you just put your things on timers and pools and stuff like that. And potentially get a battery. And many a times, the, these companies even cap how much they're going to buy from back from you. Um, yeah, some companies do um, cap. Thanks very much for coming. Yeah, some companies uh, do cap what you can put to the grid, uh, but most don't. <clears throat> hey, Brian, can you just uh, describe the um, installation process and, like, simple as like your technical term before you pop the um, the panels on the roof, right, and then your your gamma cable in it. Yeah. How does that go? To the, yeah, the distribution board or yeah, okay. So if you in terms of the so the set the sale process is the guys would turn up and do a site inspection, check your meter box. Two reasons. One to check you know, if you've got a fire resistant backing board um, and make sure your board's on a on a hinge panel. Some of the old houses aren't, so it's asbestos. 
um, and they need to check if you've got space in your board for one the solar main switch. So that's one point. If single phase is that big, the three phases that big. So do you have a space on your DIN rail to the bottom bit? And then do you have space for a consumption monitor if you want to go that way, right? In terms of the process from the office, we get the paper, we check it, um, uh, make sure that it's designed properly, um, voltages and that sort of stuff. And then on the day of the install, the guys turn up, they'll jump on your roof, they will take photos of anything they find on there that they don't like. So much some crack tiles, we can replace them for you with that. Um, any dents in the, in the tin from the guy putting the foxtail dish up or whatever the case may be. So we take a lot of those photos. And then if you've got a tin roof, we don't do any extra penetra any extra penetrations in your roof. So take out your screw, put your, put your bracket in. It's got a rubber stopper underneath so you don't get your electrolysis. And then we go back into your hole with a new screw. It's got a rubber down the top. The only penetration we will do is a 25 mil penetration to <laughs> the DC cable. So if you've got two streams, you can have two, two holes like that with a deck tight instead of them. Um, you then put a DC isolator on your roof, which is the million dollar question, is a DC isolator worth it? And this industry is an arms about, it's just not worth it. But anyway, you pretend it's worth it. Uh, and then we do cable. And this is the, you know, back to the quality side of things. You know, the, the poorer quality installs out that they've got to get a job done in five minutes, otherwise they they lose money is they'll be very rough with the cable and, and do they hide it and is it in your cavity and is it down your you know in your interior cavity of your, of your roof and then down to your meter box is it next you know, if you've got double story you've got no choice if you've got single story we always try and put the conduit in your cavity so you can't see and then it comes out in your meter box if your inverter is next to the meter box so it's got to go dc cable from your panels I won't actually go in phase, but I won't confuse it. Um, into your inverter. The inverter will change it from DC to AC, and then that will then go into your switchboard. How do you physically run into your meter box? Okay, your meter box is on a pole on, a, on your property somewhere? Yeah. Okay, so you'll have a subboard in your house. So, yes, yes. So we'll just go into your subboard, and there's no digging and no, no. Ah, yeah, okay. So you, you hook up your put the other end of your cable into your software. Yes, yeah. yeah. So again, we go and make sure you've got space for a for a, um, a main switch, single phase, three phase, yeah. and then if you want a um, um, consumption monitor, it's another that size. But if you don't have space, then we just basically will basically build you a, a load sensor. Just Can you uh, <coughs> explain the benefits or otherwise of three phase power as opposed to single? Um, from a solar point of view? Solar. Okay. Um, okay, so it's a good question because trying not to become too technical, but the ruling with Energex is you can only, on Ergon, you can only put five kVA or kilowatts, just say, to the grid per phase. Okay, so if, so if, you, if you've got single phase, you typically have a five kilowatt inverter with 6.6 .6 on your roof. But that's your, that's not thinking outside the box, right? So one, what our consultants will do is they will look at your bills and work out what's going to be the right thing for you because there's the cheat, right? Um, so the cheat is, again, you've got 5 kVA to the grid. So solar is going to generate power, run your house, access to the grid. That access to the grid can only be 5 kVA per phase. <coughs> so what we do, if you've got a big bill and your single phase, we go 8 kilowatt inverter, 10 kilowatts for the solar, but in your little smart meter, we say, please only ever put five kilowatts to the grid at any given second. So do you think you cost that triple phase straight off? Yeah, because we upgraded John's from a single phase property to a three phase property. So, um, so you've got 15 kilowatt inverter, is it 12? Oh, 10 kilowatt inverter. So 10 kilowatt inverter, three phase. Yeah. And 12 kilowatts for the solar, 13? 13. 13. 13. Yeah, 13 kilowatts for the solar. Oh, okay. uh, that fits all the rules because it's not more than 5 kPa FA. But if his bills were ballistic, then we can go, technically, you can go 10 kilowatts of phase 
breaks all the rules, but we then tell the smart meter only put five kilowatts to the grid at any given second. And that's all managed through that monitoring device. Okay. So the monitoring software on a drop line actually does do that. It lets you cap it up whatever you want it to be. So you can basically pump out the most to the grid that you can in one go and use the rest of the house. I great. Um, I've heard of um, some systems that have inverters that panel rather than single inverter. Correct. Um, what's the difference between that and what's that? Okay, so there's two types. Okay, so there's a back to that solar edge, Israeli mob. Um, they do the optimizer. Thanks very much. Uh, they do an optimizer. So it's one inverter, okay, at the meter box or close. And they have optimizers under the panels. You can monitor every panel, every panel does its own thing. You can shade one panel, doesn't touch the rest. Better technology, better warranty everything. Um, but it's still DC, right? Again, the other option is another solution which is called N phase, which is one of our partners, which basically doesn't operate in DC power, it operates in AC power. Okay, so you don't have an inverter by your meter box, you've got inverters under every panel. And then you've got an AC cable going into your meter box. Is there multiple AC cables for each panel? Uh, no, no, just some branches. It comes yeah. out of a by branch and it just comes one, yeah. one down. But again, they all operate independently. Um, the warranty is not as good as the Solar Edge, uh, but it does the same thing. So not much benefits, other than the shading effect that you're saying? No, look, there's heaps of benefits from a, I mean, without being too technical. So every panel, every brand, every brand look, at the, look at the spec sheet, it says 350 watts, 370 watts, but plus or minus 3%, plus or minus 5%. That's because you can never, so the question was, sorry, I keep forgetting to mention the question. So the question was, is going optimizers or end phase worth it? Outside of if you've got a shading problem. So if you've got the optimizer on the panels, what will happen is what will happen is, is that even though that panel might be 350 watts plus or minus 3%, if you have a string system, the rule with the string system, so SMA, Fromia, Sungro, all those inverters is that that string will operate as well as the worst panel. So if you've got one panel that's on that bottom end of that scale, that whole string is going to operate like that worst panel. If you've got a bit of dust, a bit of, bit of bird stuff on that on one panel, that whole string will be operate as well as that worst panel. The monitoring will tell you though, which is good, yep. but it won't tell you which panel's got a problem unless you have solar edge or end phase. With the, with the end phase and the solar edge, every panel does its own thing. So one can be in dark and it's not going to affect the rest of the string. Um, if you ever have a warranty claim in, 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 in years down the track, and they're not 370 watt panels anymore, they're 790 watt panels, and you go, oh, amazing. And you put that 790 watt panel on your string system, it's gonna work as well. <laughs> That's the worst panel. But if you've got M phase or solar edge, that 790 watt panel is gonna operate like a 790 watt panel. It's, it's a much, and that the premium is not that much. Really, it's not that much. Do you need any special lighting protection? Uh, in Darwin, we do. Um, yeah, we put surge protection on a lot of our systems in Darwin. Uh, down here, no, not so much. Is there enough? No worries. Can you switch them off? Surge protection or solar? No, solar panels. Yeah, so you'll have a, a DC isolator and an AC isolator. So if you want to turn the DC off, you just go to your inverter and under the inverter, either connected to the inverter or in a separate little box, you say DC isolate is turned off. And the Fire East want a PV sticker on the, on the, on the board. Yeah. And that's one of the other benefits of um, going that solar edge technology, just while I'm talking about it. Um, and it's why in the States, a lot of solar gets installed with solar edge because it's a rapid shutdown. So the rule with, without being too technical, every panel's got 40 volts, right? So if you've got 10 panels in series coming to your inverter, you've got 400 volts at that inverter per stream, which is not great. 
but if you have a problem with the grid or there's a or there's a fire or whatever if that inverter solar edge recognizes there's a fault it'll drop every panel to one volt it's called safety C. You did mention that, um, going back to my question earlier about heat pump, what have you done? So you did mention that you probably switch it on for half an hour, one hour, whatever, in the morning, early in the morning to keep the... You might not need to, though. It's just like, yeah. yeah. But my question is, are you able to do that only because you have the batteries? No. no. All that little timer is doing is telling your element to turn on and turn off. Turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Would it still be effective if I don't have the batteries because the um, sun wouldn't be that high and you know, possibly be using as much energy at that time today? Look, I mean, depends on your circumstance, but if you tell your hot water element to turn on at nine and four, yeah. it's, it's whether the sun's out or not, crazy heat or crazy sun or warm, or it's raining, you're going to cover the majority of the power that is needed to heat your hot water. So all it's doing is turning, for example, your, if you've got an off-peak meter with your hot water, all it's doing is it's saying, whenever you need to turn on, turn on. But it's using technically off-peak power. But all you're doing is you're bypassing that, the solar doesn't benefit off-peak, and you're basically telling that hot water to use your normal tariff, but please only heat up between this time and this time. And then depending on um, whether that's enough for you, my wife said to me, that's not enough, so, because, you know, we've got lots of kids and yeah, so by the time the morning came, they shower at night, then my wife showers in the morning and she's got no hot water, so that's not good. And so we just go to the meeting and go, turn on it, it's five o'clock, whatever it was, for half an hour, and then she gets hot water in the morning, and then by nine o'clock, it's now on again. So you don't need batteries. You don't need batteries, but it might be getting the power from grid around that time, five in the morning, not through the... Correct. Yes, 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 okay, yes, 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 okay, yes, yes, yep. yeah, it just uses the grid for that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Are you having panels in like a 6.6 kilowatt system and sort of what area does that take up? Okay, yeah, depending on the panel brand and the wattage, um, I keep talking the LG, but I should get paid by LG, but don't. Um, the LG Neon 2s are 350 watts uh, or 360, depending on which one you get. So you need 18, is it 18? Yeah. So 18 panels for a 6.6? Uh, for 6.6 kilowatt solar system? No, on no, LG 350s. Um, on the LG 350s, we do 19 uh, 350 watt panels to get 6.6. Um, uh, 18 360 watt panels is, I think, 3, you know, 6.48 or 5.7. You have to yeah. do the, the calculations. The, um, the new 360s, obviously, a little bit more efficient, but um, trying to stick under that 6.6 uh, sort of cap that we're allowed to do on a with a five kilowatt inverter um obviously it's a couple of couple of watts less it's really very very minimal um so yeah so about two by one, two by one. So, so if you go two by one you won't be it's it's about 1.7 1. 1.6 is yeah 1.6 to 1.7 um commercial sales are more like two by one um yeah so you they know, all sort of remain the same size, but keep growing in, in efficiency. If you budget 36 square meters, then yeah. you're fine. Yeah. But the good thing with going, you know, you string inverters, you've got two inputs. So you have test, your LGs, so you have SMAs and your frames and your sun you've got two inputs. So you have to have panels on two roof factors only. You can't have three, unless you do some other stuff. But typically you can't, you've got two roof faces. But with the solar edge and the end phase, you can do whatever you want. Two there, two there, two there, two there, two down the road, doesn't matter. I think also one of the confusing things that the questions that I get is um, how come there's a five kilowatt inverter or a 10 kilowatt inverter with 13 for you know six or, or 13 kilowatts worth of panels? Um, and that's called panel optimizing. Basically, you can imagine a five kilowatt inverter with only five kilowatts of panels, that inverter is only going to work at you know, at its, at its best performance in the middle of the day. By panel optimizing that inverter, it's going to work uh, at its, at its uh, you know, its full um, power as soon as the sun comes out in the morning and all the way to the afternoon. And that's why we, we panel optimize the inverter with that 130%, you know, 30% 30, 30 more panels than the actual uh, inverter itself. 
which is obviously different to optimizing or microinverting the system. So you're eliminating a lot of those uh, drawbacks and losses that come with a string inverter. Um, definitely a string inverter is an older technology compared to um, a multi-string setup where you can identify each and every panel's performance. If there's shading on one, we can work out what tree's growing up a little bit too much and is affecting our system. And um, also with cleaning, uh, lots of things, multi-string or, or per panel monitoring makes so much sense. Um, and the cost has just come so far down. It's, it's the way I would definitely go um, if I was installing this to stay on a long-term property. Um, so you just said that the cost has come down considerably. Yep. So how much more do you reckon would need to be for the six Thanks for coming. Six Look, our systems for a screen system range from just over $4,000 up to $8,000 for an LG uh, premium European inverted system. All of our inverters have a 10-year 10, 10 warranty. We don't sort of like to install a system with less than, uh, an inverter with less than a 10-year warranty. Um, but I'd say um, an optimized system is so attractive. We're, we're talking the mid $6,000 for a 6.5 kilowatt, which is very attractive. Uh, which is the same as pretty much a, a decent string system. You just get so much more for it. Um, an end phase system is quite expensive. And I, I think that technology will, will be following trend with everything else and coming down it's still pretty high up there at sort of nine to 10 grand for a six kilowatt, six and a half kilowatt system. So um, definitely automatic diagnostics with your multi-string systems, end phase and, and uh, optimized you know, it allows us to monitor that system and check the house without you guys even knowing what's happening and it sends us an alarm. So it just eliminates so many headaches as well as being more innovative, more flexible with expanding and, and everything else. So it's definitely what I would be looking at. On top of the uh, optimized inverter, it has a full 12 year replacement warranty, which is so attractive. Um, and Solar Edge themselves in the last 12 months have doubled in size. Uh, they're a Fortune 500 company, they're rock solid. Um, and having your panel and the inverter under one warranty umbrella makes so much sense. Um, so that's another reason why you know, we look optimized. Hey, what, what capacities do you move up? In, like you did 6.6, do you then go, if you want to increase it, you then go to a seven or a 10 or a Whatever you want, kilowatts. up to about 13 kilowatts on a single phase. Yeah. Is it, but, do you move up and you have one panel or you have a dozen? Or is there a, it's not a rule. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the inverter, the inverter size of us on a single phase are five, six, seven, eight, ten. Okay. And we then, recommend any, any uh, inverter you install, you should panel optimize it from day one. So leaving it technically unexpandable, but kind of picking your inverter, panel optimizing it, and that's, that's the oh, way. Okay. But the hybrid uh, optimized inverter, when you add a battery, we can then add another, uh, the same amount of panels again. So the five kilowatt optimized inverter, you know, start with your six and a half, add your, add your battery later on, and then you can add another six and a half kilowatts of panels. So giving you a very flexible system. But if you do go string, um, definitely panel optimize it from the start. That's, that's awesome. Sorry. Thanks, Anything else? I hope you guys have got something out of today. It's a very, 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 very murky industry. And trust is everything. How can I get a quote? Uh, just scan that little QR code thingy there at the back, and then the details then will be in touch with you. Um, anyone else wants to sponsor, sponsor quote, or if they've even got a solar system they want us to do some analysis on it, just scan that code at the back. And uh, away we go. And then upstairs, have a look at our little showroom. There's a pretty cool little video going. Um, Thanks, guys. Very, thank, thank you very much. That was terrific. Thank you. Yeah, we're not really stuck. So, you're so right. It is. You're so right. We're the variation in the points. So, the lowest I've got is really 300.